you Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at the Radeon HD6870 Vapor X Edition from Sapphire Technology. Now, last time I looked at the 1 gig Flex Edition of the Radeon HD6870. It's very similar. Sapphire makes a whole bunch of AMD or ATI video cards. And the Vapor X is a different beast. This one here has an additional layer of cooling, basically. Okay, so it's got this little vapor chain uh, chamber, a little plate that is stuck to the top of the GPU, of the chip. So it's adding an additional layer of cooling. We're gonna look at that a little bit, test it out, see how it does. And uh, if you're interested in looking at the Flex Edition, click on this link here and you can watch the review on that one. Now, the Vapor X Edition has been around for a while now. It's an award-winning technology. And uh, in the box, like you would expect, you get a whole bunch of different adapters to get you going depending on what you have. Maybe you got two cards, so you can have uh, crossfire. You got a mini DVI to DVI, HDMI cable, VGA to DVI, two cables there for your Molex to PCI Express in case your power supply needs that. You can uh, obviously see that this has great cooling right from the middle there, that terrific fan. That's a signature series fan. I've seen that on many of their cards. There's the uh, connector for your uh, crossfire. And you can see that plate. That's the plate, that's the vapor chamber in there that heat is going to basically condense the water there. You can see the vapor rise and then come down as it cools off from the top and then recycles itself. So it's a terrific little um, technique, I guess, that in that little chamber, that little vacuum box, that layer, there's constant cooling happening there right so that is basically the vapor x on top of that you've got a heat sink you've got your heat pipes there's the two connectors for your six pins uh, power so this is a really nice looking card i tell you and um, I've, I've always been impressed at the uh, sapphire technology and especially with the vapor x series okay for hardcore gamers that want a little bit more and um, that additional capability now you can see here that this is no different than the flex edition same connectors two dvi one hdmi two mini dvs uh, display ports there so you can hook those two display ports and have a total of like five monitors if that's what you want but um, here is where the chart shows you how the 6870 basically lies in between other types of cards and the price points for those as well my test system that I've reviewed many different video cards is this one today. This is an AMD system, obviously. And you can see here the specs on this BART's GPU. 40 nanometer architecture. And you can see as well in it, there's lots of bandwidth, lots of memory, lots of GPU speed here because 900 megahertz is pretty darn good. Memory clock. 1050, that's not too bad. We can overclock that and take that further though. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Now, temperature wise, right off the bat, 37 degrees Celsius, that's terrific considering that the fan is really low at 1100 RPM or less. Overclocking it, not bad at all using the Sapphire Tweak utility which they provide. And you can see that I overclocked the GPU to 975 and a walloping memory clock to 1250. And that's a really big jump, 1250. Of course, I have to set the fan at 60% because I want to make sure that I keep things cool. Definitely keeps it cool. And uh, you can see there the default clocks and the overclocked. Now, at default clocks, 3D Mark Vantage, 15995 GPU score, terrific score. Then overclocked, bam, 17171. Right up there, terrific results. If we compare those results now to other cards, you can see here it comes very close to 6850, obviously beats that one, and almost close to the 5870 as well. Now, looking at 3D Mark 11, you can see here the frames per second at the default, then overclocked, you get a little bit of a boost there, a couple more frames per second, and of course a higher score. And that's what this is all about, right? Squeezing a little bit more, getting more frames per second out of this and again rendering the light orange is the overclocked the orange is default and you can compare it here to the 6950 that i had previously installed in this machine and you can see that it beat the 6950 series so 6870 is stronger and keep in mind when you enable acceleration from the gpu when you're doing rendering 
so the hardware acceleration in it that is going to save CPU cycles. You can see that the CPU does not have to work so hard when it goes rendering. So keep that in mind. If you're going to buy a card like this, make sure that you enable and make use of these features. Okay, because that way you won't put so much strain on your CPU. When it comes to game benchmarks, terrific benchmarks here on Stalker, you can see using DirectX 11, this is at 1680 times 1050, and you can see overclocked. Also, the values will go up. This is the overclocked value, as you can see here at 1920 times 1080. Okay. Battlefield, Bad Company 2, great results. Look at those frames per second that this is going at. Even on Ifinity, running at three monitors at 50, 40 times 1050, I'm still getting pretty good results. Of course, Crisis always gives a run for the money. And um, it's great to stress test these cards out at super high resolutions. You can see Dirt 2 always running smooth. Very nice game to run on a Ifinity setup with three monitors. Terrific. And um, also, if you're wondering about the Haven Tessellation benchmarks, here they are. So you can see the default scores compared to the overclock scores as well. So terrific package, really like the VaporX. It comes through, it delivers great overclocking, especially on the memory. And I'd like to thank Sapphire for providing it, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.